to the show. Oh. Fred, how are you doing this fine evening as we get this show of on and off the field ready to go? Oh, I'm not doing too bad. Hanging in there. It's Tuesday, right? Yeah. Yeah, we, we, yeah we're live. Uh, oh, but Tuesday. yeah. My days get confusing sometimes now. Um, <laughs> but yeah, how are you doing? Yeah, just you telling me your work life lately has got me confused <laughs> on what day it is. <laughs> I bought a whiteboard that's three feet tall over here that reminds me what day it is now. That's what I have going on. That's my life now. Yeah. And I'm doing just great. I am doing fantastic because we have an amazing, amazing guest already waiting in the wing, ready to rock and roll. Lois Cook, or I think I think I pronounced it right. We'll find out. She's shaking her head. Yes, she gave me a thumbs up. Yes, I did it. Yeah. All right. Cool. Uh she plays in a professional women's uh, tackle football league. She's a TikTok star. She has her own show. She does everything, literally everything. So right before we get to the hit the hit the punch there and bring her on, we got TJ over here. He's already asked one question we're going to ask. He knows what's coming. <laughs> Lois doesn't know what's coming. I'm so sorry. <clears throat> Josh, what's going on? <laughs> Let's do the warm up here real quick. Let's make sure everyone out there is flossing. Please, please, please floss. We cannot emphasize this enough. Recommended by 10 out of 10 podcasters everywhere. Follow, like, observe, share, and subscribe. Everything on and off the field related. Durf, give them the rest of it. All right. Well, you can follow, like, observe, and share on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, as well as subscribe to our YouTube and our Twitch channels, which we are currently live on, all by searching at OOTF Podcast. Make sure to click the link in the video description to get all the other links that you need to follow this great show. Also, make sure to follow Notoriety Sports Network on all their social media platforms. The Next Greatest Sports Hub is in... or <laughs> Next Greatest Sports Hub in America. Uh, <laughs> make sure to rate and review the show on Apple Podcasts so that we know how we're doing and what you like or dislike about this award-winning show. That's worded a little weird. It's probably my fault. Yeah, I, I was reading it on the fly, yeah. and it caught me a little <laughs> off my guard, but we got there. We got through we'll, it. We'll, we'll work on that. We'll work on that for <laughs> next week. Oh, we got people popping in here. We got Strikeout Beer in here. He's got his earbuds aren't working. We got Josh in here. We got TJ in here. We're ready to roll. Let's click some buttons so everything looks like it's not terrible, and let's bring in Lois Cook, everybody. <laughs> Hey everyone. <laughs> Welcome in. How are you this fine evening? I'm doing good. Good to be here. Thank you for having me on. I mean, to talk to you guys. Yeah. We're thrilled. <laughs> we couldn't be more ecstatic. You know, that, that, that I've just been kind of, I, I saw some of your TikToks. I'm a big TikTok advocate. I just, I'm scrolling for days. And I, you came across, I was like, what am I watching? This is, so I started digging. I found the Instagram. Then I found the league. I found what we get the like, Royal Women's Football Alliance. And I just started diving into all this. And it's, <laughs> it's crazy because I've never heard of it in my life. And I, I mean, I got some questions about that coming up here. Yeah. But first and foremost, let's just, let's just figure out, you know, let's talk about you. We want to put you on the pedestal. This is your time. Let's, oh my goodness. <laughs> so tell us a little bit about yourself. Um, well, as you can see, I'm a football fanatic, <laughs> pretty much. I love women's football. I'm an advocate for women's football. Um, I've been playing my whole life. I've wanted to play my whole life, but I started in organized football um, in 2002 with women with the Women's League. Um, and I've been obsessed with it ever since. I advocate for little young girls and women who aspire to play. Um, so as you probably know by seeing my TikTok page, I'm really big on empowering and encouraging everyone, no matter who you are, girl or boy, man or woman, to follow um, your dreams and to find your passion and pursue it. Um, that's one thing that's su super important in my life, um, obviously, because that's what I dreamed of. When I was a young girl, I wanted to play football and I didn't have that opportunity in school. And that's probably what made me so obsessed with it is because I couldn't really <laughs> reach out and touch it. So I... Um, found my way to football and here I am today. Um, I'm a mom of four boys um, and we play every spring. So 
the calendar between April, <laughs> April and July is like, do not schedule anything. Um, so yeah. <laughs> That's kind of a different world, you know, because you got the NFL playing through the wintertime. Everyone always talks about conditions like, oh, man, got to travel to Green Bay in January. That's going to be a toughie. Well, geez, you got to travel to, to travel down to Tampa in, in July. Oh, my God. That's probably yeah, just as bad. Well, it's actually it's really interesting because we 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 get started in the fall. So we have tryouts and everything in the fall. We go through the winter. We do a training camp um, in the winter and then we start practicing, of course, in January. And so we're, we have pretty much all, all four seasons. We, we go through winter practices. Well, as far as DC, I can't speak for, you know, California, or, <laughs> but, um, but yeah, we go through, you know, winter practices, we'll, you know, we'll be outside while it's snowing in practice and then we'll get to the spring. It gets a little nicer. And then we're playing games in, you know, the summer and the, the heat, you know, where you're, the turf is burning your toes. So yeah, we get, we get all of it. <laughs> I can't, I can't, I can barely just walk outside to go take the trash out in my driveway, you know, maybe 30 steps max in the summer. I, I, we live in upstate New York. Oh, wow. And, you know, 80 degrees. I'm out here dying. So I can't imagine trying to play a full football game out there. Uh, yeah. It gets a little rough sometimes. <laughs> Tick tock and fire. Everyone's very excited. We, we push, we let everybody wow. know what was happening tonight and everyone is super yeah. stoked. Well, I, I'm super excited. So I appreciate that. Thank you. So I just want to make sure I get this right. I got this right. 18 seasons. Yeah. Well, so I have been, I've been with the game since 2002, but I've, I have 10 seasons on the field. Um, and then I've, you know, I have four sons, so I've taken some time off for that. Um, I actually moved to Washington state in 2014. I thought I was retiring by the way, in 2013, I thought that was that I was going to retire from football, but I, Clearly that didn't happen. But um, so I went to Washington State by 2015. I was like, I want to play. I got the itch to play. Um, so I went out for Seattle Majestics at the time and um, went to the training camp and everything. Everything looked good. You know, I'm getting ready to play. And then next week I found out I was pregnant. So, so I couldn't play. Oh. <laughs> so I um, ended up missing um, that season. And then the following season, same story, same story, had another Another son. Um, so I missed that one too. But yeah, so 10 seasons on the field. <laughs> wow. Nice. Yeah. yeah, I was I was wondering, I was trying to do that math when you said that you had four boys. I'm like, 18 <laughs> seasons. Wait a minute. There's, I'm sure some had to be missed in there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just but assuming. I've definitely, definitely been involved, you know, even even if I wasn't playing. So yeah, uh, we were on. Let me see if I can. I pulled up. I was, you know, I we do our research here on the show. Obviously, we're we're very in depth. We are prepared, ready to go. I think I was on your LinkedIn, and okay. uh, it, it mentioned uh, community outreach for the WFA, uh -huh. maybe. So, yeah, if you want to yeah. speak on that part a little bit, yeah. So, I am the director of community relations for the team. Um, I have been a huge, huge av advocate for reaching out to our community. We have had so much support over the years, the DC Divas, and. Um, the divas are are huge on family and just being really close knit and um, and helping each other. And so naturally, we want to reach out and touch the community too. And because we've had so much support from our friends, our family, our supporters out in the in the in the community, we we know that we have to give that back. And so um, something that we always do is we'll do um, you know community service events where we'll reach we'll go out to um, senior citizen homes and. We take cards for Christmas and Valentine's Day that we each of the players have signed and uh, we'll go through door to door and, and just, you know, say hi. Um, we know that people, you know, might not might not have family nearby or maybe they're, you know, by themselves during holidays and stuff like that. So it's important to us to um, to be there for them. We also go to pet shelters and um, uh, animal farm. Uh, we have a horse farm that we visit in, in Virginia. Um, and then, of course, the schools are really huge for us. We are very big on um, going out to elementary schools, middle schools, high schools and doing assemblies and career days and field days and just being there for the kids and talking about women's football. So that's really important for us. So anything we can do to serve and give back to our community, we are definitely there for. And I didn't do it any justice. There's so much other, so many other things that we do. But those are some some big ones. <laughs> well, that's, that's awesome. That, yeah, that really encompasses what we try and do on the show as much as possible. That's why it's on and off the field. We always yeah. love talking about everything that happens on. We're big sports advocates, especially football. 
but it's that off the field stuff that's really important impacting the community. Oh, yeah. People with mm-hmm. these platforms just going out there and making a difference in every, uh, everyone's lives in their communities. Definitely. A very big deal. Yes, definitely. And I got a comment over here. We kind of, I, I, I messed up already. If you haven't been able to tell yet, we're not professionals by any means. <laughs> yes. <laughs> this is Lois Cook, wide receiver for the DC Divas. Yeah, I should probably throw that in there. Well, I probably should have threw that in there too when I introduced myself. <laughs> so, no, don't don't try and no, we'll take the blame. It's fine. You're you're perfect. Don't worry about it. It's our fault. We'll, it's, it's on us. <laughs> it's, it's team effort. It's a team effort. <laughs> Absolutely. So I really want to, I want everyone that's in here. We got, we have, so for some reason there's 15 people watching right now. That's not normal. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for that. Uh, so if everyone's wondering, you can go to WFAProFootball.com. That's where you're going to want to go. I should, I'll throw it in the chat here in a second, unless Fred wants to do that. Um, yeah. WFAProFootball.com. And you can learn all about, the let me show you get it right women's pro football tackle league the women's football alliance that's yes. what it is yes and i started diving into this there's a lot on here there's a lot <laughs> in here schedules and teams and the teams is what got me yeah there's a map in here uh i oh, want to yeah. is there 64 teams there's yeah you're yeah about 60 i i would say approximately 65 you know this year um with covid we have a couple of teams um, that won't be, per, you know, performing this season. But we've actually also this year, I'm proud to announce we've become international. So um, oh, so there will be teams um, overseas as well. So as of now, but over the, throughout the U.S., um, there's approximately 60, 64. If you counted, I'm going to go with you. <laughs> I, I just I just saw it somewhere random. It said 64, okay. but we will absolutely count because yeah. that, that's we have the team map here. I'll pull that up in a second just to give people an idea. Division one, division two, II, division three, and I believe Team United is the international team at the bottom here. That is going to be, well, that's the whole. So every year there's a team. Well, I won't say every year. Don't quote me on that, but um, we do have a Team United that does play internationally. So it's, it's okay. the best, you know, you know, players from all across the, the, the U.S. will come together to form one team and then we'll go out to Sweden, Finland, wherever, you know. Oh. And, yeah. Nice. So it's kind of like, you know, with basketball, they have their world team, I guess they used to have back in the day. Yeah. yeah. Kind of like that. Okay. okay. Yeah. Very interesting. So what's the deal with the division one, two, and three? Let's get a, so, Let's try and get a breakdown on this one as I pull up the map. Yeah. So, um, so, um, it's broken down into division. We obviously women's football is, um, still developing and growing. And so we have teams that in order to kind of even the playing field, we have some teams who have you know, a larger number of players versus others, depending on the area. Um, so it is broken down based on um, on that um, so that there is a little bit more of a even, you know, um, level playing field for everyone. Mm-hmm. All right, well, that makes a lot of sense then. I, yeah. So, I mean, you can just look around here. There's our Seattle Spartans. I'm a Seahawks fan. I don't know why I've always been a Seattle. I'm just become a Seattle sports fan for no reason. Yeah, so I, this is my new team now. I gotta nice. go get me some Spartans gear and the Divas too. Don't forget the Divas. Oh, and, yeah. Well, I, that's already in the mail. It's on the way. Don't worry about that. <laughs> <laughs> what, what do we got here in Buffalo? Because that's our closest team. Yeah, oh, we have Ontario. Like, okay. Maybe the Utica Hellcats. How about that, Fred? Are you, you good with oh, that? Oh, there we go. Yeah. All right. Perfect. Nice. New York knockout. We got all kinds of teams. Let's find. There they are, the DC yeah. Divas. Well, how does it feel to be the best team that represents Washington DC? Oh my gosh, yeah, because we do. <laughs> we are the best team. We have, we have the most wins um, in with all professional sports in the area. So I mean, that feels really good. It's it's something to brag about, you know. As people learn about women's football, I like to throw that in there. <laughs> Very nice. I yeah. think this is the time to pounce right here. The Washington football team is down. They are struggling. It's time to pounce. Get there on social media and be like, if you don't want the if you don't want to follow the Washington football team, this is the other Washington team that you can follow right here. Yeah. <laughs> we'll actually give you wins. We will. <laughs> We've got an all-time winning record of I believe it's one 142 wins over 39 losses, something like that. Wow. Oh wow. Yeah, I might be I might be a one or two numbers off there. <laughs> but yeah, it's it's impressive. So let's I, I think I believe I saw back to back championships maybe back in fifteen and sixteen. Mm-hmm. 
2015, 2016, also 2006 um, championship. Um, I was not there for 2015 and 16. I was mm. having children <laughs> at the time. <laughs> um, I did go to 2009. We went to the championship as well. I went to that one, but that season I broke my leg, so I couldn't play. Um, oh. But I was definitely there. 2009, we did lose. I think we lost by about two points. It was horrible. It was just a, a horrible loss. Um, but yeah, we were out in Round Rock, Texas, a beautiful facility. It was the first time I had ever had a, a jumbotron, and I, I shed tears on the field. So it was pretty pretty cool. Um, but yeah, so we're we're definitely definitely going for the win every every se- every season. So you mentioned the the two point loss there. So what's worse, the two point loss or like what happened to the Chiefs in the Super Bowl this year? What which one? What at the end of the day, you go home, like you know you're just outmatched, outplayed the entire time, and you got blown out, or you're so close but just couldn't quite grab it with the two points. Honestly, gosh, I what is worse? Um, I almost feel like the the two point one because you're so close, you're right there. Mm-hmm. Um, but how can I, how can I, how can I weigh the two? <laughs> Cause you, nobody wants a blowout, right? Nobody, absolutely nobody wants that. But, um, but I, I think those, those, those really close games really get you because you're, you're, of course, I, w- I don't want to take anything away from anybody's game, but you're, you're literally put fighting, you know, your blood, sweat, and tears, you're putting everything mm-hmm. into and you're just, you're like, okay, we can't, it, the whole game, you've got your hopes up. When you have those blowouts by fourth quarter, you're like, well, at least maybe I can get a little something, but I know it might not take me too far. But, so you're fighting just to, you know, kind of put some more points on the board and, 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 you know, close and, you know, get the game a little bit closer. But those, those, those close ones are, those are tough to, to swallow. Yeah, unless you're losing, if you're losing by 25 or more points, unless you're playing the Atlanta Falcons, you're it's t- that's a tough one to come back from, right? There. <laughs> right. Shout out to my Falcons fans, anyone out there. <laughs> Cook is the goat, absolutely. Hey. So, who who is the goat of the W WFA? Is there is there a goat that is? is I think it was a 20 years that the WFA has been been around. So the WFA, I, I, I don't think it's 20 years, but the DC Divas have been around for 20 years. Oh, that's probably um, so. okay. joined, yeah, we joined the WFA, I believe, um, 2011-ish, around 2011 or 2012. Um, so the WFA might be about nine or 10 years old. Okay. So, yeah. Um, something like that. <laughs> All right. Um, <laughs> is there someone that like everyone looks up to? That's just like wow. Like if you're gonna go play this team, or you ever had to play this person, like their name just kind of rung through the halls. You know, there's there's quite a few, honestly. Um, and then you know, of course, with football, you have all these different positions. So I feel like there's one for every position. Right. But um, I'm just gonna I'm gonna throw out a name. I think everyone's a goat. <laughs> everyone <laughs> in here. Um, Trigger McNair is um, from the DC Divas, and she's a phenomenal linebacker um, that just anytime I think about a linebacker, I'm like, they're not Trig, you know, like, I, you know, that's the person that I would have to like that holds the bar. So um, if anybody wants to see her, definitely Google. I mean, you know, YouTube, she's got clips on YouTube. I just posted one not too long, like yesterday, I think, um, of, you know, one, one clip of her, but she's just phenomenal. Well, Nobody. There <laughs> There's your jersey right there. If you want to go buy the goats jersey, there you go. And then right behind it is, is Lois Cook. You got it. Go. <laughs> just put it in the same basket when you go on Amazon or something. Just put it in the same basket. Exactly. You won't regret it. <laughs> so I mean, that's I, I, I'm trying to think of more football questions. Derf, you got anything just eating at your brain? <laughs> hmm. Put you on the spot because well, I'm I'm bad like that. <laughs> Well, we can take what Josh is asking here in the comments. Um, is, do you have any kind of nickname on the field? You know, is there anyone, anything that they kind of just, you know, as, if you hear that, you know, they're talking to you about? Yeah. Okay. So my nickname is Lolo. That's just my overall nickname. Mm. Um, so it'll go from low or Lolo. But, um, but on the field, directly related to football, I have a few. Um, number one is, um, well, not number one. I don't, I'm not giving it in order because I don't know what order. <laughs> But um, Bambi is one. I've got really skinny legs. <laughs> so, Bambi. Um, twinkle toes. I definitely do some kind of stutter step um, that happens quite often. So twinkle toes. 
Um, and when I broke my leg, the play that I broke my leg on was called Willow. So Willow was a nickname at, at one point in time. Uh, <laughs> do, you, do you like the Willow nickname? Or is that kind of like a PTSD thing? Like, oh, don't mention that. <laughs> I ain't running that route again. <laughs> um, no, I don't mind it. I don't mind okay. it. Yeah. And it's close to low anyway. So, no, I don't mind it. <laughs> Will low, low. Yeah. There we go. We'll combine them. Perfect. Yeah. <laughs> So what got you going with TikTok? I just saw yesterday on International Women's Day, 100K followers yeah. on TikTok. That oh my God. insane. <laughs> I'm so, I'm just so grateful for that. I, um, I, 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 I don't know. When I first started TikTok, I didn't imagine it. I was like, well, maybe if I get 10,000 followers, that'd be, that'd be pretty cool. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Like a hundred, like that's insane. I'm really appreciative of that. Um, I don't take it for granted at all, but I, I got started through the pandemic, like a lot of people. Um, mm-hmm. You know, when I was growing up, um, I li- my brother is 11 months older than I am, so we we're very, very close. And he's actually who got me into football. But um, but growing up, we also did these little, um, we had a camcorder at home. And so we would make little movies, like after school, that was our thing. We'd rush home and go make a, do a TV show, or we'd um, do stop action, um, or make little commercials and stuff. And that was always fun. So the creativity side, you know, coming from like behind the scenes, um, you know, TV production, all kind of stuff like that was was always somewhere back there within me. <laughs> um, I even went to when I went to college, I went for um, uh, mass media production that didn't last too long. I switched over to psychology, but but that was something that I was interested in. So when TikTok came along and I started to see videos of like transitions and people going from, you know, like just zooming from one place to the next or changing completely, you know, into a different person or a different look. I was like, oh my gosh, I got to do that. Um, And so I started playing around with it and um, of course had a lot of fun. TikTok is so addicting. I mean, I I love TikTok. The creativity on there is insane, you know, and the fact that you have, I mean, you have up to a minute, but um, you know, if you have 15 second, um, 15 second videos, 30 second videos. So that really pushes the creativity. You've got to get clever. And I love seeing what people can do. Um, so I've, I'll just scroll and just kind of go through, but making videos, I kind of started all over the place. And then it was one video that I made um, related to football that was, I was sitting on a chair and I was throwing the ball up in the air and I caught and I said, this is me as a kid dreaming to play football. And then it clipped over to me on the field, catching a touchdown. And then I said, this is me as an adult living my dream. And it blew up. And I was like, okay. (laughs) And I started to get all the comments, all the young girls who are like, oh my gosh, I want to do that. I want to do that. And I want to be like you. And, you know, all the like overwhelming comments that I got from that. I was like, yeah, I'm here for you. So that's how I started out with, you know, started really getting into making the empowering videos and the football videos, football related videos. So um, yeah, it's been a joy. It's been a, a, a lot of fun. And um, uh, this is just the beginning. So, <laughs> yeah, that's amazing because it, yeah. that's all it really takes for with something like TikTok. Mm-hmm. It's just that mm-hmm. one video, yeah. even if nothing else blows up. It's just the one that puts you on the map. People see mm-hmm. it now. And I, I remember I remember seeing that one. I think I was following before, but I do remember seeing that one. And now people just they're looking into it now. They're looking into you. They're looking in the league, looking into just playing football. Maybe girls when they were younger didn't think it was a possibility that they just liked playing in the backyard or whatever they're doing right. these days. And now they now they know it's possible to do it. It's yeah, yeah. I mean, that's what it's all about for me. Um, you know, and 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 even just like with TikTok, I've always I've always I felt this way for a few years now, but just with TikTok has really amplified it. But you know, when I was a young girl, I wanted to play football, but I didn't have a vision. I didn't have that person, that woman to look up to that I could align myself with or follow in her footsteps and, you know, say, okay, she's doing this, that, and that, you know, I can go do this and I'll do it my way or whatever. I'll find my way to the game just like her. Um, I didn't have that, you know, and I had a, a bunch of no's or, or, you know, it's a guy's game or, you know, whatever the case is. Um, and so for me, it's so, it's so important that I am there for that next generation Um, So that they have someone that they can, you know, ask questions. I'm always open on TikTok. I'm like, if you need advice, ask me anything. Um, And I'm always, you know, I do my my very best to respond to all the comments and all the all the messages. And I want to be very I want to I want to say, you know, clear, very clear that 
it's not only girls. I'm here for the guys too. You know, like I have actually one of my biggest supporters is a young, a young middle school boy who plays football. And um, I met him through a school and he's been a huge supporter ever since. Um, So I definitely advocate for anyone who wants to play football, anyone who has a dream, whether it's football or not, um, you know, to, to follow their dreams. Um, But, but certainly most certainly, um, those young girls who who are looking to play, you know, we see it every day today. You know, nowadays we're seeing it more and more on TV. And it's it's so true that if you can see it, then you can believe that you can do it, too. So. Um, so, yeah, so I'm just hopefully hoping that I could be there for them and um, kind of be a shining light, <laughs> um, you know, for those who are looking to get into the game. Yeah, we got nice. a fellow podcaster coming in, Lisa Wendy. She says boys can watch girls play football. Yeah. <laughs> you yes. y'all can sit down on the couch and we're gonna take over the game for a second. <laughs> and you know, and I, I should say it's not and I think um a lot of and not this comment, but a lot of times people kind of get caught up in a competition between girls and, and guys, and it's not that at all. And like we touched on it earlier. Um, you know, the women's league, we're here to complement. We're not here to compete with the guys. We play in the spring, they play in the fall. So mm-hmm. it, you know, that's the kind of dynamic that we have. We're we're definitely not out here trying to say, you know, we can take on the NFL and da, 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 da. you know, it's not about that. We just love the game just like they do. So we're here to play. Yeah, I like that. And I've missed so many years of free football because the spring comes out. It's the off season. We could have been watching football this whole time. What the heck? Why has no one told me this? Exactly. Jeez, what are we doing? Yeah. yeah every fall when, you know, they're always like, uh, you know, when people are posting on social media about, you know, football's back, I'm like, it never left. <laughs> <laughs> Just got to look harder, I guess. Jeez. Oh, I got a couple of questions rolling around in my head. I got to get to the ones in the comments real quick. My parents came in and they said, how old are the boys? Oh, thank you. Um, so my oldest is 14, um, and the youngest are one, four, and five. So I have a big gap there, <clears throat> but I have a big helper. <laughs> so, yeah, all, all and, kinds of things awesome. over here. <laughs> and then Josh came in with another one. What's the funniest moment on the field and or huddle? The funniest moment? Um Oh my gosh, that's such a hard question. Just <laughs> I don't know so, many, so-, so many years to look back on. That's a- <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to think of a funny moment. I mean, I, I could think of maybe practices, but um, um, ah, can I do a TikTok later on that? <laughs> I can't think of one right now. You, um, absolutely. You can make a TikTok and we, you can, we have a TikTok ourselves. We don't, we, I think there might be six videos. We've had it for a couple of months. We don't post on it. Yeah. Well, I'll send you the tag. Tag us in it so we okay. make sure we see it. Okay, I'm going to follow up. I apologize. I'm going to follow up with okay. that, uh, that question with a TikTok because I have to. I do have to think on that. It's you a last second the- question. Again, it's our fault. We probably should have prepped for that. No. <laughs> All the blames over here. Don't worry. We. <laughs> okay, you keep it. You keep it. <laughs> All right, there we go. <laughs> yeah, the Strikeout Beer Boy is another. He's one of our. Uh, we were very good friends with them. They're a podcast too. They said normally it's baseball time, but. Football's still going. Yeah, yeah. And we're Saturday nights, too. So I don't think we, I, oh. you know, so. Oh, very nice. Watch your, watch your baseball early in the day. <laughs> there, there you go. go. Even better. <laughs> Specifically blame me. Okay, that works. Okay. Too. So yeah, it's not even Dirk's fault, just mine. <laughs> <That's fine. laughs> um, so I just had, I guess, I don't want to say on the serious side. I, I don't want to damper the mood here. <laughs> I guess it kind of goes with the conversation, though, is. The WFA, I don't want to say it's an unheard of organization, but I mean, we're sitting here saying, you know, no, no one in the comments, we didn't know the WFA was really around. We didn't know when they played, didn't know any of the teams. And much to your help, now we know it's a thing. So is t- like you're on TikTok, you're obviously making people well known, but what are, what's the kind of the plan around the league? Is there a plan to try and grow the audience, let people know what's the outreach uh, to try and get people to watch the WFA? Yeah. um, So uh, we have a television contract um, that is just started last year. Um, So we've we've had um, a contract with well, ESPN televises our championship game. But now we actually have our regular season game games being televised. And I mean, you know, it's hard. You know, we we deal with a lot of, um, to be honest, stereotypes and, you know, there is sexism still. um, And people don't really like the idea of women playing football. 
Um, I see it so much on TikTok. It's oh, um, it's not overwhelming because it hasn't really taken me over the top yet, but it is quite a lot. And so when you see stuff like that, how can you grow? You know, you have, you know, if half the population, I won't say half, but you know, if there's a, a big, a good part of the population that's continuously, um, you know, shooting down women who play or um, bullying or harassing girls who want to play, why would they want to play? You know, so, um, so how can we grow from that? So we, we're trying, we're doing our best, you know, all we, you know, all the teams do as much as we can with marketing. Um, but we definitely need help with that. <laughs> Um, we are the best kept secret, um, but we don't want to be a secret any longer. So, um, yeah, so I think the television contract is pretty good um, and helpful. Um, and I think that this year with COVID has been actually beneficial in a way to getting us exposure because now people are kind of slowing down and they're kind of watching their screens and stuff like that. And so that's helpful for us um, where we can try to take advantage of of a little bit of um, exposure on social media, especially. Um, yeah, yeah. So uh, you guys can spread the word for us too. <laughs> I was just gonna say that we're, we're on the case. Okay, thank we're you. here to help 100% as much as we can. One viewer, t- one viewer at a time, right? <laughs> thank you, thank you. And then the other thing too, is that a lot of these women who play, um, you know, all have full-time jobs outside of playing football. So it, it is difficult. Um, you know, you've got where people are not, you know, you don't have every player focused. Like I, like I'm able, I'm thank, you know, thankfully and fortunately able to spend a lot of my time um, marketing the team and marketing the league and stuff like that, where other players don't have that, you know, they don't have that luxury. They, they are working and busy, you know, everybody has a busy life, you know? Um, and so it's, it's kind of hard to, hard to get the word out when, when you don't have the time to do it. <laughs> um, so. Yeah. We're, trust us, man. Yeah. We're, we're in the same boat. I'm trying to do this <laughs> podcast and it's just prepping for this alone. Yeah. I can't imagine taking a whole summer off to play football and then, have to still do your job and uh, that's a lot to that's a lot to balance yeah yeah but i but i i have to say i've seen so much growth um you know uh, when i started in 2002 i'll walk down the street and i'll introduce myself and say that i play football and the comp the response is like soccer or flag or or what's that you know and today i've i'll walk down the street and i say about eight out of 10 people that I might encounter will be like, Oh, you play with the divas or they'll at least know about women's football to some degree. So it has grown a lot. And so I, you know, we still have a a long way to go, but I do want to, you know, at least appreciate that. The future's bright. Definitely. (laughs) A quick question from Lise. How did your family react to you playing football? Did you get the dreaded talk, but it's a boy's sport. (laughs) Um, So, okay. Um, Let's start at the beginning. Uh, when I was very young, um, I, I was raised by my grandparents and I had open heart surgery <clears throat> when I was born. So my grandmother was very protective and she definitely didn't want me to be, she didn't want me to do anything. She didn't want me to play any sports. Um, but I was, you know, stubborn. I, I was very energetic and I'm out there with my brother and I followed him everywhere. We did bike tag, we did soccer, we did baseball, everything. Um, and so I think sooner or later, she just kind of chalked it up as like, she's going to play. She's just going to, you know, she's, she's going to do it. So, so they're, they've been very supportive. I don't remember a time where they told me that I couldn't do it or that, you know, uh, I, other than just, you know, that you've got to be careful, you know, you're going to hurt yourself. I've gotten that talk, but she still gives me that talk. I'll carry a bag out to the car and she's like, put that down. You're going to hurt your back. Um, so that's just how she is. And I appreciate that from her. Um, but then um, moving on, um, my family now, um, my boys have always been a part of football because they kind of were born into football versus, you know, me introducing it to them. And it's like a whole shock to our family. Um, so it has always been a part of my life. And, um, you know, since before they were born, um, even my my oldest son, when he would see me back in the day, like he'd see the Red, or sorry, the Washington football team on TV, he would say, it's mommy football, because clearly we have the same color. <laughs> uh, yeah, he was, you know, so he's very excited about it. They, they love it. They love going to the field. Um, and one thing about the Divas is that we're very family oriented. So kids are, at, you know, kids will come to practice with us. We have, you know, very close, um, close uh, family within the team. So 
Um, so yeah, they all they all enjoy it, and they know either either they enjoy it or they act like they enjoy it because <laughs> it's 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 non negotiable. <laughs> Everyone's having fun regardless. They're trying. <laughs> right. <laughs> just so you know, just throwing it out there with the Packers, Josh's team. He, they need a wide receiver just in case you're open. Okay. If, if you get a call, just you know, just expect that. Not a problem. There, there. Since it's not going to conflict with our uh, WFA season, uh, I might, I might be able to work that in. Uh, there you go. I don't see any problems. I, I feel like the contract's already signed. <laughs> So we have the Game Days Dolls Sports Talk Show. Yes. I just looked that up before the show, saw it on YouTube, hit the subscribe button. What's So what's going on over there? Yeah, so Game Day Dolls is a sports talk show, uh, sugar and spice, but not always nice. We talk all things sports. Um, myself, Yaya, is uh, our, our another host, and Fifi. And um, this is actually, we just started this season, so um, definitely having a lot of fun with that. But yeah, we're just all things sports. Um, anything that comes about, we're, 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 we're all over it. Very fun. That's what, you know, as long as as you have fun doing it, that's what it's all about. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. And there, it's such, it's so much fun with the the other two ladies. Like we just, we have such a good, maybe too much fun sometimes. (laughs) (laughs) Gotta get the work done at some point. (laughs) Yeah. Once we hit the second hour of this show, things kind of get goofy. Usually it's, you know know how that goes. (laughs) You're just getting recruited now. I might as well just throw the Seahawks in there. You know, <laughs> Tyler Lockett might be on the move. We need a wide receiver too. So yeah. the Bills, I, yeah. I don't know how much longer is Diggs going to be there. Come on. Oh, my goodness. Oh, well, thank you very much. <laughs> he actually came out to one of our practices. Appreciate oh. it. Yeah. Oh, very nice. That's yeah. cool. Yeah, very nice. <laughs> and then we have the Lois Cook Foundation. I think yeah. you found it in your link tree. What do we got there? Oh, my goodness. So, um, so the Lois Cook Foundation. So this was born on my birthday last year. It's very, very early stages. We're still developing, but um, but this is a way to um, to give back. Um, you know, personally, this is. I knew that I needed to do something bigger than myself, and um, and so the, through the Lois Cook Foundation, um, <clears throat> obviously, women's football definitely needs to grow, and there are so many young girls out there who aspire to play. So it's hard. You know, the women who play now have to cover their own fees. They're, you know, we have fees that we have to pay. They have to cover their own um, uniforms and equipment. And so um, it does get difficult. So so the Lois Cook Foundation is here to um, support those players who already play with um, covering those fees and things like that with financial assistance. And also for the young girls who aspire to play to support them, whether they need financial aid or um, through mentorship and connecting them with players who already play. So the, the young aspiring players can be set up with um, a veteran or a seasoned player um, and get support that way too. Oh, that's awesome. So, and again, very early stage. I appreciate mm-hmm. you asking about that, but I'm very, very, um, very excited about it. And there's so much more to come from it. Still, still early, but yeah. Oops. Oh, Dylan lost you. Hello. <laughs> oh, there we go. <laughs> I'm terribly sorry about that. Again, again, blame me. Here we go. He's <laughs> <laughs> down the tracks. Uh, is there a website for that that people can go to? Yep, it's loiscook.org. Oh, very oh, nice. There you go. .org. Yep. <laughs> Too easy. Uh, yeah. We'll we'll throw that in the chat for everybody as well. And I mean, I know we have at least one more question. That's a guarantee. But before we hit that one, Durf, is there anything else? Anything non at Yeah, I want to make sure we get everything out in the open. <laughs> um, not that I can think of right now. No, it's been everything's been great and just great information to get about the you know, uh, you know a football organization that you know I didn't know of and just hear you know how diverse the sports world even more is. Than what we see on national media, um, but yeah, I got, I got nothing, and everything here is great. Thank you. All right, so this is a this is a question that we have asked every guest we've had in 2021. Oh boy. We've had okay. we've had ESPN radio hosts, we've had former NFL players, we've had other sports podcasters, we've had anyone that you can think of. We've asked them this question. Okay. 
pie or cake? Cake. Oh. Oh. Cake. <laughs> wow. I will second guess myself. I want cake. <laughs> cake over pie. All Very right. Nice. But you know, my okay. So my grandfather is famous for his sweet potato pie. So I was like, wait a minute now. But. The thing about it, let me explain my answer. Okay. Well, yeah, absolutely. Take all the time you need. This is a very important question. <laughs> so cake, I feel like I do not discriminate against any kind of cake. Unless it has a whole lot of fruit and nuts in it. I don't want it. But um, but all you know, I, I can I will definitely take a lot more flavors from cake than I will with pie. I don't like certain pies, so so I'll I'm definitely cake. Yeah. Man. Yeah, that's <laughs> We've because I think we're we've been leaning very heavy pie lately. I think the count was up to six one pie, maybe. Wow, okay, so mm-hmm. this, that took me by surprise. We've been on a streak of pies and then to mean, get, a, cool. get a cake in there, too. So, you know, <laughs> <laughs> man, well, that's great. Uh, that's we'll be sure to add that to our tally. Um, <laughs> we'll we'll tag you in it. We got to we'll, we'll put it on social media for everyone to know where everyone stands. I know, okay. I know, I think we're both. Our, Durf, are you are cake? You? We've I'm had cake. this conversation before. He's cake okay. too. Yeah, we're split. I'm, okay. I'm pie, unfortunately. <laughs> well, I'll be the odd person out. I don't mind if everybody wants pie. That just means more cake for me. So there you go. <laughs> yeah, you, you and you and Durf can share a slight. What's your favorite cake? If you had, if if you were like last cake you could ever eat in your entire life, what's it gonna be? Okay, it's gonna definitely be like a butter cake with chocolate icing. Ooh. Oh, a butter cake. Yeah. Sounds that sounds that's good, good stuff. <laughs> I want I want all the all the stuff that nobody wants. I want the <laughs> and sugar and all the you know everything, the butter and the extra vanilla and the extra sugar, all that. Yeah. <laughs> but they can keep their fruit cakes. Keep exactly. that. Okay. Make that entirely clear. No fruit cakes. No nut cakes. We're looking for the butter cakes and the chocolate frosting. That's yep. what we want. Perfect. <laughs> Well, thank you so, so much for coming on here and giving us your time. This was outstanding. And I want to open up the floor for whatever, uh, you know, social media tags, links, whatever you want to tell the people to go find, go look at and whatever, whatever you want to say, the floor is yours. Well, first of all, thank you so much for having me. This is so much fun. I really appreciate you for letting me come on tonight. Um, I'm at cleats and stilettos um, everywhere. And so on Instagram and TikTok, I'm at cleats and stilettos. And um, Lois Cook Foundation on Instagram, and of course DC Divas football and WFA football. Perfect. Nice. I think that's everything. <laughs> Is that everything? Want to make sure you cover our grounds here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we'll be sure to let everybody know all of that, and oh, yeah. we'll we'll throw it all in the description of the episode and everything. We cannot thank you enough. We'll just we'll just keep saying thank you because <laughs> this was just this was outstanding. <laughs> thank you so. Much. Thank you so much. I really, I, I can't tell you how much it, it means to me. And I, I know I speak for the women's football world that, you know, you take the time to, to learn about women's football. That means so much. And it's, and I know that we talk about, you know, the financial needs with, with women's football, because obviously we run off of donations and sponsorships, but I think the more important piece to it is just the the support and, and knowing and sharing and just talking about us because that's, what's really going to help us grow. Well, you have at least two more here, and then I, hopefully yeah. our audience is right there with us, I would like to think. So <laughs> yeah, thank you. One, one show at a time. Well, thank you very much, and have a fantastic rest of your evening. You too. Thank you. <laughs> I mean. That was awesome. Probably should just end the show on the high note there and just, <laughs> just call it a night. I don't know where you can really only go down from here, I think. <laughs> far as i'm concerned but no that was great i mean that was really good and sorry lisa i couldn't get to your last question there i'm sorry but <laughs> it's, it's really sorry about that but we got we got chocolate and butter chocolate cake oh thank you got the emojis Josh ah, is there on, we go Josh is on it That's great cool. interview thank you dos primos thanks boys the wife coming in thank you <laughs> josh says thank you as well and another great interview yeah i mean is this? I don't. I don't want to. I don't. I don't know if anyone else is watching, like any of our former guests. But was that the best interview we've had? I think so. I mean, that was. That's gonna be hard to beat. Twenty twenty one's a long year, but that's gonna be. That's gonna be a tough one to beat. All yeah, right, definitely. 
We only got a little bit of time left. We're doing a shorter show tonight. We got, you know, there's there's stuff going on. We got things to do. Mm. This is a weird Tuesday, but let's jump into some NFL news. Uh, we got we got to let people know our opinions. Yeah. We will try and do rapid fire as much as possible. <laughs> no dope interview. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, all right, let's do it. Let's let's hit it. Let's hit it hot and heavy. Dak Prescott got paid four years, one hundred and sixty four million dollars, sixty six million signing bonus, which is the highest ever in NFL history. Mm-hmm. Forty two million a season for Dak Prescott. Overpaid. I think yes, but let's see. I want here's what happens. You know, my thought on the the contract is that Jerry Jones is literally just flexing his muscle right now with money, and they're saying, "Yep, Dak's gonna get us there. Dak's gonna get us those rings." Okay, Dak, let's do it now because the last few years, you know, Dak's been up there in stats. You know, he's been in the top 10, you know, quarterback range, but they haven't got that far in the playoffs. Like, they've maybe, I want to say divisional round, I think is what, as far as they've gotten. Yeah, thanks for reminding me. They beat the Seahawks. Get there. <laughs> <laughs> Appreciate that. <laughs> so, I mean,. It, it seems a little much for a quarterback that can play definitely above average, but they haven't carried the team as far as that team should have gone with this kind of contract. Yeah, like Mahomes is only Mahomes is going to average forty five million a season, so Dak's only making three million less a season on average, and the Chiefs have a ring, so. I don't, I don't know. This is the weird thing we, you know, we talked about before with Dean and Hughes is, you know, the salary cap space, you know, no team's ever really in trouble with the salary cap, but you know, they make a work around it and make it work. Like, all right, Cowboys, let's see what you can do here with this. Cause this is going to get real interesting in the next couple of years. Um, you know, how do they retain players? You know, how do they build around a quarterback? Because they've already paid a ton of money to the receiver. They've paid a ton of money to their running back. Now they pay a ton of money to the quarterback. Where does the rest of the money go? It, now you're looking at veteran minimum veterans. You're looking at, you know, through the draft, just getting that young talent, you know, hopefully down the as time goes on. But the draft picks, you know, that money becomes available again. You know, maybe Dak takes a smaller contract and his next extension because, you know, technically he can, you know, they can redo his contract after three years. He can, you know, he can void it then. Um, but yeah, I, I don't know. It seems, it seems odd, but this is what the Cowboys probably had to do because, you know, Dak's agent probably walked in and said, look at what the team was as soon as Dak left the field. <laughs> And the Cowboys are like, yeah. yep, here you go. Here's our money. Thank you. All the leverage right there. <laughs> look what that team, look what happened to that team. Right. Yeah. It, it, and Dylan, Mr. Mr. Wrong spelled Dylan came in with, <laughs> you know, it, it, when, he, when as soon as they paid Zeke all that money and then stalled on Dak is really when things just got messy mm-hmm. for them. You paid Zeke, overpaid Zeke. He hasn't, mm-hmm. he's been, his production's p- plummeted season after season. You paid Amari Cooper. You had a bunch of money, dead money, put into your offensive line because you had people retiring left and right, and your defense is in shambles. The defense has nothing, and I know people are excited that they keep to get to keep Dak. I know he's been a top ten quarterback, and things are things look like they're looking up right now. We have our wide mm-hmm. receiver, our quarterback, our running back. Yep. Just look everywhere else. Look where the money is right. not. You can you can obviously pick out the people who are getting paid the most, and yeah, they're great players. Look where the money is not, and yep. that's where it's going to hurt. Offensive line defense it's 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 they're in trouble they're in trouble zone so dylan's happy about that he's an eagles fan so he'll be fine (laughs) so the raiders offensive line trent brown x raider he's going back to where he became a star he is on his way back to the patriots with a 2022 seventh round pick for the patriots 2022 fifth round pick i said that right right yeah i think i got that right (laughs) Yeah. So he signed a deal with the Patriots, one year deal up to eleven million dollars. And then he had to gall to tweet out, I picked happiness over money. It's pretty much something along those lines. <laughs> I, I think you got both. Just I would say so. Eleven million dollars. <laughs> I, I think you got both. So 
Uh, yeah, I mean, it's just, there's a lot of offensive line stuff going around because right below we have the Titans. I found this hilarious. I was dying <laughs> laughing when I heard this one. So everyone knows what happened with Isaiah Wilson, mm-hmm. the Titans offensive lineman, the rookie last year, 2020 first round draft pick. The Titans didn't give Isaiah Wilson a uh, a happy birthday via social media. And that did not go over well. So because of that, <laughs> they're trading their first <laughs> round draft pick to the Dolphins in addition of seventh of seventh round pick, and they're getting a seventh round pick back. They're giving up their first rounder from last year and swapping seventh round picks with the Dolphins for Isaiah Wilson. A guy who was a first round draft pick you're sending and just getting a lower draft pick in the seventh round let me make that entirely yeah. clear <laughs> just because this this all really stemmed from i'm sure there was more issues in this but the fact that it really started when they didn't wish him happy birthday on social media that's oh, probably that's hilarious but a couple of offensive linemen moving around and we have a couple of offensive linemen got the that got the tag as well a couple of people who didn't get the tag Mm-hmm. I think people after watching the Super Bowl are starting to realize, man, offensive line is pretty important. Even defensive line too. We, you need an offensive line to protect your quarterback back there. And yeah. I'm sure a lot of these guys are going to get are going to get picked up very fast. That or we'll get to that are now free agents. But Isaiah Wilson and Trent Brown have well, sort of new teams. Trent Brown is back to his old team, but mm-hmm. Darren Clark coming in. What's going on, Darren? Darren's in. Darren's in here. He's going to let us know who used to play in the '80s for us. Um, who's your '80s comparison of Isaiah Wilson, first round draft pick, who turned out to be a bust? <laughs> Can't even call him a bust. It was only one season. Yeah. Speaking of free agents, 2020 comeback player of the year Alex Smith is now a free agent after the Washington Football Team released him. Kind of a sad ending to a good yeah. story. Very. Very upsetting, but Alex Smith did come out and say they didn't even want him there. The fact that they had to play him was right. They didn't even want to play him; they just had to play him because he was the only guy left that was standing. <laughs> right, but I mean, yeah. At least I mean, I would hope it wasn't, and there wasn't any like you know bad blood or anything in, but, but you know between them as they parted ways. Hopefully, it was kind of a a mutual agreement ish. Like they they both knew it was coming because of the situation. You know that Alex kind of brought to that his article you know week or so, a few weeks ago um but yeah you know it's i hope I'm, I'm hoping alex smith can find somewhere to play you know this season and we'll see Hopefully what happens somewhere with a very good offensive line yes <laughs> that's all you can hope for really that should be the biggest checkbox that he needs yeah. to fill the check off <laughs> I need to not get killed. Don't come to Seattle. That's the last place you want to be right now. That's not going to pan out. Oh. So hopefully, yeah, we're hoping to at least, I don't know if he'll get a starting job. It's going to be tough. There's a lot. Of, we went over teams last year with starting quarterbacks. We played the Cam Newton game. There's really only a, there's a very few amount of teams actually are really looking for a starting quarterback or have competition at the quarterback mm-hmm. position, especially for what, a 36, 37 year old Alex Smith with a, Beaten up leg, it's going to be tough. Yeah. It's going to be tough for sure. Dylan says the game's won in the trenches. Literally just watched it happen in the Super Bowl. And Darren Clark, you don't seriously expect me to remember all that from the 80s, right? Uh, <laughs> I thought it was worth a shot, Darren. I'm sorry. Maybe the 90s. Let's bump it up a decade. <laughs> I mean, what what was uh, Cunningham? I grew up in an Eagles household, so I know a few Eagles players. But I don't know what years. <laughs> Michael Vick. Donovan McNabb. That was my, that was my yeah. childhood. Brian Dawkins. That's what I had. Mm-hmm. So let's run down the list here. We are running out of time. I'll try and do this quick. Well, I'm going to just kind of our franchise tag people. The whole episode I named it here. Tag you're it. Here's our here's our tags from only what two days of uh, franchise tag being able to be used. It started this week, I believe. Yeah. Pretty sure. Yes, there was a couple of dropping in. I think over the weekend. I think. Okay. We were hearing some about, but then, you know, this last couple of days, because the deadline was today at four o'clock, um, you know, this is where you're going to get their, your bulk of your tag announcements. But yeah. So we start. we got, here we go. We got Bronco safety, Justin Simmons, which is this, this is his second time being franchise tagged. Same exact situation last year. They said, hopefully we get a long-term deal done. They didn't. So here we are again, jet safety, Marcus may they're very, I think he's just coming off of his rookie deal. 
So apparently they didn't want to give him a long-term deal coming off the rookie deal. Uh, Washington mm-hmm. football team's offensive guard, Brandon Sheriff. I mean, you can't lose a guy like that. That guy is a amazing yeah. guard. Uh, Giants defensive lineman, Leonard Williams. Great young defensive player on the line there. He's mm-hmm. so talented. He's just been on terrible teams between the Jets and the Giants. I feel so bad for him. Speaking of feeling bad for people, Bears wide receiver Allen Robinson was franchised. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Allen. Uh, Bucks wide receiver Chris Godwin. And people are saying, well, Levante David and um, Devin White, I believe. Or they need, Shaq, Shaq Barrett. Shaq Barrett. Sorry, wrong guy. <laughs> that They need deals. Well, they did sign linebacker Levante David to a two-year deal worth $25 million. So he's secured. We're still waiting on Shaq. But Chris Godwin, he has been franchise tag. We kind of felt like that was coming. Saint safety mm-hmm. Marcus Williams got tagged, and then Panthers offensive tacker, t- offensive tackle Taylor Moten. Martin. What do you think that is, Moten or Martin? I would say Moten. Moten. Because it's only one T. Oh yeah, that makes sense. Okay, yeah, all right, I like it. Way, way to break that down for us. <laughs> and then of course they tag Dallas quarterback Dak Prescott. They did that just as a sh- uh, basically a sign of good faith because now they mm-hmm. can't tag him again. It's right. It's either when, at the end of this deal, it's either sign him to another long term deal or you're out the door. You can't tag him again. Mm-hmm. So that's why they did that. Kind of weird. It's a weird process, but that's just one of those things. So which one's the what's what's the most shocking one out here? Are these just kind of going through the motions with these? You know, for me, I really think the most shocking is Chris Godwin. I really would have thought they would have went defense for Tampa. Because of you know we saw it in the Super Bowl, um, I would have been, I was expecting you know the Bucks to you know figure out a long term deal with Chris Godwin because you know he's proven that he you know he's a vital part of the of the team. Um, I don't know that that was my most you know surprising there. I was really hoping for a long term contract for him for sure. Yeah, I guess I'll put the long term on defense. I guess we'll see what happens with Shaq. I thought yeah. I, you know, I was really surprised with Allen Robinson. Mm-hmm. I thought he was just gone. I thought they were yeah. just done with him. Honestly, maybe it's this push for Russell Wilson and Deshaun Watson that has them thinking we should keep Allen Robinson just in case. Like if we get a if we get him a quarterback, he'll be happy. Mm-hmm. Until until they don't, and now they're just hanging on to a disgruntled wide receiver for oh my gosh, I don't even know fourteen, twelve to fourteen million a season, maybe. I don't know what the yeah, franchise the actual wide receivers are at. Yeah, it's probably somewhere around there. Yikes. So we have a couple of team player pay cuts. We have wide receiver Devin Funches took a $750,000 cut to stay with Green Bay. That's a, that's a good financial decision to maybe yeah. win a Super Bowl. Yep. The Bills center Mitch Morris took a $2 million pay cut to stay with them. And then Ben Roethlisberger obviously famously took a $5 million pay cut to stay with the Steelers. They, they're even still. <laughs> it didn't help that much. There, those guys no. are in trouble. Yeah, oh yeah, they are. And then, last but not least, we have some. I, I put surprising free agents. I just say that because they they were supposed to be franchise tagged, supposed to be. They were rumored mm-hmm. to be, um, but they were not franchise tagged. So technically, they're on the market. The teams are, you know, they could be signing the long term deal. Still, we'll see what happens. But we have linebacker Dud Dupree from the Steelers, tight end Jonu Smith, and cornerback Malcolm Butler of the Titans. Hunter Henry tight end for the Chargers, running back Aaron Jones of the Packers, kicker Dan Bailey for the Vikings, I believe. I, I don't even know what team he's with these days. Well, he's not on a team. Eh, LOL. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> sorry, Dan. Linebacker Hassan Reddick from the Cardinals, who just had an amazing season. Shocking. Mm-hmm. That they hope, I don't know what they're doing there. That was He had 12-plus sacks. Amazing season from Reddick. Well, they just paid J.J. Watt so much money, they can't keep their good players anymore. So. Oof. How's 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 Reddick <laughs> feeling these days? He got he basically just got replaced. That kind of hurts. Pretty much, yeah. Uh, Seattle Seahawks running back Chris Carson and cornerback Shaquille Griffin, the Joe Thune, uh, who got tagged last year by the Patriots offensive guard. He mm-hmm. is not being tagged this year. And then the Chris Long offensive lineman says he's unretiring and coming back to football. Interesting. He says he's in shape. He's like three fifteen. He's jacked. Hmm. He says he's good to go. I, I don't know how old he is. <laughs> I don't know what he's looking for. Um, he signed with an agent and he's ready to go. I guess we'll see what happens. I feel like that's interesting. I feel like you don't see that 
ever really is a, you know these linemen becoming unretired. I can't really think of anyone else that you know that went that retired route and then came back. And it wasn't like one season. How long has it been? Two, three years? It's, it hasn't been a short I mean, period of time. I would, yeah, I think so. Yeah. No, oh, well, I guess we'll see what happens. But I thought that was a fun little tidbit to bring up. Yeah, definitely. And then, yeah, that's the show. I mean, is there was there any surprising free agents on here? Do you think they'll end up with their teams? Anyone on here that you want the Bills to sign? Maybe you. you I know the Bills are looking at tight ends. You got Johnny Smith and Hunter Henry staring at your face. Uh, I'll pass on Hunter Henry. Okay. As as talented as he is, I think the the health concerns would would worry me as a Bills fan. Um. I don't know. John Smith could be an interesting pick. Pick up. Very talented. Red yeah. zone. Hundred. Just a big red zone threat. Dude is mm-hmm. tall and wide. Or a big wingspan. Yep. Mm-hmm. That's where he caught most of his touchdowns. He had a couple of multiple touchdown games. If you're within the five yard line, look out, John Smith. He's, he's that's who you want to keep an eye on. Yeah, I guess you know I would assume he won't be a free agent very long. Is Bud Dupree? Yeah, that's the one that if the Steelers can't get that done, they are letting blue chip talent walk off that team. And, and another Bud team Dupree's is the one they tagged last year. And they, yep. I, I understand that it's, it's hard to tag people back to back years because you get that 20 percent increase on the tag regardless because mm-hmm. you already you already got the general increase just because people get paid every season. But then right. you tack on 20 percent more on top of that if you tag them back to back years. Mm hmm. I understand that's tough, but you can't let a guy like Dupree leave. You just can't. Yeah. You work. You drafted him. You worked hard. You, he he worked hard. He's a he's a cornerstone piece of that defense and that pass rush. Oof, that'd be that'd be tough to watch him go. It would, and if he does leave, the other team that the team that signs him is going to extreme extremely reap the benefits of that. Yeah, yeah, for sure. All right. Well, that's our show, everybody. We got things to do, but we appreciate everyone coming yeah. in. We appreciate everybody that uh, came and walked. We very much appreciate Lois Cook coming on and, and mm-hmm. doing an interview with us. She took 40 minutes out of her night to just, to yeah. just chat it up with a couple of goobers. Send long to the Cowboys. Anybody is pretty much an upgrade at this point. True. True. <laughs> Lois Cook, amazing show. Had so much fun. Thanks for having me. Thank you for coming on. Yeah. Good. Thank you, Lois. Thank you so, so much. Thank you so much. And we'll be looking for that TikTok <laughs> for the fun, <laughs> the funny moment. Can't wait. We can't uh. keep an eye out for that. Uh, but in, and then next week, we already have another great guest uh, lined up for next week. Yeah. Um, Bridget. 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 Yeah. Bridget, a uh, former NFL cheerleader of the Los Angeles Chargers, right? That's where they're from. Yeah. Right? Yep. Where are they now? Oh, San Diego Chargers. No, it's the San they Diego were, Chargers. Yeah. Well, yeah, she, so she been. was a cheerleader for San Diego Chargers. <laughs> oh, okay. Before they yeah. came to Los Angeles. Okay. Right. And she also, she's a podcaster herself. Um, mm-hmm. So that'll be that, that, very, very much looking forward to that as well. And you guys are having great guests. Yeah. Thank you. We're, we're doing, we're doing our best, but we give all the credit to the, the guests that come on for us and give us their time and, are amazing like lois was tonight Mm -hmm. you know just absolutely amazing so thank you thank you everybody and like always we will definitely be back next week because mama didn't raise no wuss